Hello everyone! Today we are inside of UEFN, Unreal Engine's Fortnite, the editor for Fortnite. And I'm going to show you how to uh, rig and animate an object. So you might want to bring in a custom object and then rig it inside of Unreal Engine or inside of Fort, the Fortnite editor and animate it all inside there too. I find this super handy, especially for objects that you can just quickly rig because uh, it's um, pretty fast how you can do this. So I'm going to import an object, an FBX, um, and the defaults are all pretty good. This is an FBX I made in Blender, so it might not be exactly the same. Um, I find that FBXs that I bring in from Blender are not properly set up. The materials aren't. So, um, I generally have to change them. So this uh, roughness is hooked up to metallic and that's wrong it needs to be in roughness here and what else I can just apply and save this right now I don't have a metallic texture and this is a toolbox and it definitely has a metallic texture so let me grab that real quick here we go metallic and let's bring that into the material right here and metallic there we go apply that now um, this still uh, I made this a long time ago so the um, if we look at the mesh the it's like super shiny so one thing you can do in uh, the editor is this is the texture for the roughness and if I just play with this curve a bit like maybe 0.5 I can lessen that shininess now this has nothing to do with the rigging or anything like that I probably have to resave my material and it's a little less shiny I guess I made this a long time ago this is like the first thing I ever did PBR with but it's a good candidate for doing this it's probably going to be something similar to you what you might um, try to rig your first time and it's really super simple so now we have our mesh all set up and I can right click on the mesh and choose convert to skeletal mesh just like that the defaults again are probably going to be fine and the first thing you'll notice is the material no longer works on the meshes so one thing you have to do on materials in Fortnite if it's on a skeletal mesh you have to go into the material and choose used with skeletal mesh. I know this is very stupid and it took me a long time to figure, way too long to figure that out, but that's what you have to do. So now we have this um, skeletal mesh and it basically has one bone, a root bone. All right. So there uh, is our root bone. And we want to add bones if we want to animate this. So we want to go to skeleton over here and then hit edit. We want to go to add. And uh, I want to change my perspective. Let's go right. Okay. Um, actually, I want to go front. Yeah. If you don't see the whole mesh, zoom out because it does this weird clipping thing, which can probably be fixed, but 
this is fine so this first bone that I'm gonna create is gonna be my base it's gonna handle the the basically the whole mesh the bottom part of the mesh and the next bone I'm gonna create um, is gonna be uh, for the hinge for the top so I wanna hit this point where this hinge is bam and the next uh, bone is gonna be a hinge for here okay because there's this little um, lock thing so I'll click right there so now I basically have all the bones I need and I want to go in here and rename them I'll call this base I'll call the second one um, top and then I'll call the last one lock yeah lock there we go alright so we have our bones all created and we'll probably gonna want to edit this because when I change my view you see that this is not where we want to be okay so here's our, our, um, our root looks like the first bone is fine but the second one is not centered and I think that's this red one so I think that needs to be zero alright that's good and same thing with the lock one the lock bone that needs to be zero and now we look pretty good here alright and I think we can accept that so now what we have our bones all set up and we're ready to weight all the parts of this mesh to each of these bones so we do that by hitting the skinning option here and we'll hit edit weights I'm instead of brush I'm gonna go to mesh okay and I'm gonna select each one of these bones and then select a point on these on this mesh so I'll select one point on the mesh and I'll click flood and then I'll hit add okay so that's most of the base right there I'm still missing a few parts here um, right here so I'll click that I want this lower part of this mesh to be on it and the same thing on the other side so I'm gonna hold shift and click a point on that other side I'm gonna hit flood and add so those are taken care of um, if I rotate around you'll see there's a, these black bands of course we want that to be part of the base too so I'm gonna select one point there hit flood add I think there's another point down here flood add and another one down here flood and add okay I got lucky there <laughs> I didn't have to do too much work um, there's also this um, this ring for the lock so I clicked one point flood add and then on the back side we have these metal pieces so I'll click one hold shift hit flood um, add and I think I think that's good I think that's everything yeah 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 all right now the top of the mesh for the top bone I click one flood it add it okay so we have most of the top this top piece I'll select flood and add 
Um, these hinge pieces, shift select, flood, and add. Um, this lock piece up here, um, that's all going to be on the next bone. Okay, so I can leave that. Uh, let's spin them around here. And these pieces need to be added. Flood, add. And I have these little hinge, like just cylinders, basically. And I'll select one, shift, and select one of the other ones, flood, add. So that's the top. Now we have one more bone, the lock. Zoom in. I'll uh, select one on that hinge piece, and then shift select one on that lock part and flood those, add those, and I think we are done. All right. Now I'm pretty sure I can rotate these and kind of show you that they work. Yes, that works. Could be better, but I'm not going to tweak it too much. Um, it's really the position of the, if this bone needs to be moved to the center of this pin, and that would work better. Um, but I'm not going to get too fussy. We'll do the other bone here. That lock, that lid opens up real nicely. And then this other bone can be moved around. So now we have everything set up. We can save this all and then we can take our skeletal mesh and put it in the game. Now, but it doesn't have any animation. Let's spin them around here. So he doesn't have any animation Oh, uh, why is my camera so aggressive? Jesus. Okay. Um, so we need to animate him now. So now what we can do is in our, our toolbox folder that we created, I want a cinematic level sequencer. Now, it, it's not, you don't have to use this. I'm just going to leave it at the new level. You don't have to use this. I'm just using a level sequencer to be able to create animations. Now, you could use a level sequencer in your game or whatever and use it like that. Or you could create animations within it and then save those animations into your inventory and use them on the item in world or in in your game that's it okay so now <laughs> we have a level sequencer and uh, when you open that up it's automatically going to put you into animation mode and we need an object in the level sequencer so we have this toolbox in the world and we here's my outliner I want to drag it from my outliner into the sequencer and now we have something we can animate okay but it gives us a transform but um, that's okay to use uh, as a in the level sequencer if you're going to use it that way but if you're creating animation this transform is not going to stick to your um, to the object when you bake it out so what we need to do is right click inside the sequencer and create a rig a control rig 
bake to control rig we want an fk rig the defaults again are probably pretty good and right here you see there's fk fk rig and it kind of puts animation on every uh frame which uh is probably not something you want so i don't know why they do that uh, but what I can do is I can just click and hold in any open area not over one of the dots but when I get this cross when you get this cross uh, that you can click and drag so that's what I'm doing I'm clicking and dragging I'm just gonna delete all those keyframes because we don't need all those keyframes and if I scroll this wheel down I can zoom in on the front of this animation and if I go this way I can look at the back the end of the animation but I want to scroll down because there is one more frame that we just don't need here so I'm just gonna click and drag and delete this so now we have our first frame with keyframes on it. Okay, but we can change those keyframes if we want. Uh, but let's um, try and create some animation. So let's open this back up. We have a keyframe at the beginning and end. And let's just say I go at um, two minutes. I have my timeline set for minutes. Um, you might not want that. Show time as frames or minutes. So it could be frames. It probably is set to frames by default. Uh, but you can change this to seconds if you want. Like, it's handy to, to do. Uh, but here now we can choose our bones. So here's that first lock one. And I can zoom in a bit. This is what's so cool about doing this. I mean, this is like the first time I've ever animated inside the actual game looking at, you know, everything in, in real time. So right there, I look at, I can animate that hinge and when I let go it didn't leave me oh it did it did leave me because I have create a keyframe selected auto selected auto keyframing so anytime you just animate a bone so let me animate this one it'll just automatically create a keyframe where you put it okay in the timeline so I could go more now or I could um, I really am only animating two bones if I animate the base then that would move it from the root now that can be handy if you're doing uh, certain things but generally speaking that's not what you want if you want to actually move the whole uh, toolbox you'll want to animate the root in place but we're not going to move them around uh, we're just going to make an animation that opens okay so we have it halfway here now I don't want it this is what five seconds of animation so I don't want it to be here so I'm going to select those two keyframes and I'm going to move them to 2.5 seconds okay and now I'm going to select and rotate that bone to be all the way open and oh I'm not on the keyframes you see that I'm not on the keyframe one thing you can that can help you keep from doing that from accidentally animating one frame over 
is when you're on a bone, so I'm on this top bone, I can hit um, what looks like the comma and the period key to go back and forth between frames. Okay, so to make sure I'm on this keyframe, I can just hit that arrow. Now I know I'm on, and I can now animate them the way I want. And now I'm going to select that lock and have that lock be all the way open. So now, here is our animation. We have the opens up. Let's say it's a chest that you want to open up. And now I have keyframes set already that goes back. So we want to change that. We could just... Um, select these keyframes and delete them and now it would stay open and that would be fine but just to make sure you could also select those two frames that open it all the way and I could hit control D duplicate that and now I have two more keyframes the exact same position and I'm going to select both of those and move those to the end just like that so now I have an opening animation alright and this is not perfect, of course. I could do things um, much better. But for demonstration purposes, this is just fine. So now we have an animation made. It's five seconds long. Um, but now what I want to do is I want to select that top mesh. And I want to bake animation sequence. Okay, now I choose Bake Animation Sequence. I'll put it in the toolbox. That's fine. Um, I can give it a different name. That seems like um, a very lengthy name. Toolbox Sequence 1. And save that. And there's different things you can export in that. And now uh, I can save this sequence so I could use it later. Now we go back into our content browser. And if we see here, we have an animation. And if we click on that animation, there it is. There's that animation that we created. So now so we have an open we might need a close so let's go back into that level sequence and now we already have that animation so we could reuse it in this um, timeline here so we could actually choose animation here and now we could bring back in that even delete these keys I won't delete them though but you could insert that animation in here we can take this out though because we don't need it for now so now we need an animation that closes right so instead we need and we could just swap this all around so this these frames we could bring here and these frames we could bring here right at the end select all these that and now we should have closing animation there we go and that closing is not like that lock you'll see this is you know you can't just 
always uh, just flip animation. So I want that lock bone, and I want, as it comes down, I want it to swing. See, it's swinging closed too soon. So I want it to stay open longer. I'm creating a new keyframe now. See that? So now it swings, still swings down too soon. So I can give it another keyframe. So just like that. So that now that works better. Now we have a closing animation. Okay. You can save this in the sequencer then go to bake animation toolbox um, similar name we'll take that out and call this sequence 2 save that export all that and now we close the sequencer and now we have two animations the second one being a closing animation but that's a quick lesson on how to make animation there is one more part to this um, sometimes you might for an animated object you might want a detailed physics model so I'm going to show you real quickly how to do that. I need to select the skeletal mesh, right click on this, and I want to create a physics asset. Let's go create and assign. Um, it can create defaults, but they're not going to be correct. Okay, so now we are inside of the physics asset. Okay, so it's creating bones or collisions for each of the bones here. Now, we don't want, for this, this is a box, so we don't want capsules. We want boxes. Okay, so let's regenerate these into boxes. And actually, it does a pretty good job just like that. Um, I, I couldn't believe it, it was kind of that easy. Yeah, it is kind of easy. Not always going to be that easy. But um, there are, uh, I will do a more detailed uh, video on physics assets. So. But now we have a physics asset and we can actually uh, apply that, make sure, go back to our um, skeletal mesh. And I want to go to details or asset details. And I want to make sure I have a physics asset. There we go. Apply to it. And it is. So we're good. But that's uh, the ins and outs on making a rig, animating your... Uh, your object and creating animations that you could use in world like now I have this mesh it has animation to play I could choose one of those two animations and when the game starts it'll automatically play that animation and in this case it, it would be looping it which we probably don't want but um Anyways, that's the video. Have a good one, everyone.